Hey Math 31, I had a request to do number 13 coming out of section 2.6 and the directions here were just to factor by grouping. So if you're ever asked to factor by grouping, typically what you want to do is group out of these four terms here we have, you usually group two together. Now they don't always have to be the first two and the last two. All right, you can do if you want the first one and the third one, you can do the first one and the fourth one, you can do any pairings you want, but usually the ones I start with are the first two and the last two. So when we're looking at that, I wanna take the GCF out of this pairing and the GCF out of this pairing. So the GCF out of these first two terms is x squared, which is why you see me factoring out the x squared there. And when I factor out that x squared, I'm left with x plus two. All right, now, what does this second pairing have in common? And you might initially say nothing, but typically when there's that lead negative there, we tend to factor it out, and that's why you see that negative heading up there. And let me just erase all this so we can talk about it. If, you, if you're not sure how this works, imagine remultiplying this. Negative 1 times x, sure enough, it is negative x. And then negative 1 times positive 2 is negative 2. So I have factored out that negative there. So what's ultimately happening, if I erase all this, is you started, right, this initial equation right here, it had four terms in it. And when we get to this step, you have two terms. And you might say, well, these, these are pretty ugly terms. This is the first term and the second term. I'm with you that they're uglier, but it's still only two terms. So you can see initially I had a plus sign, a minus sign, and a minus sign. So I had three operations, right? Addition, subtraction, subtraction. And that was separate, separating one, two, three, four terms. And if you look down here now, I only have the one operation, and it's separating the one, two terms. All right, so let me erase all of this just so we can see where I'm about to go, okay? Now, these next two terms, if we look at them, this term has an x plus two, and this, terms has, this term has an x plus two. So what I can do is I can factor out that x plus two. And what would I be left with? Well, let's take a look. I would be left with an x squared from this first term, and technically there's a minus one there from that second term, and that's where you see me getting the x squared minus one. And if you're struggling with that, let's, let's just refoil it over here so you could see it. If I had x squared minus one times x plus two equaling zero, and I wanted to distribute, all right? I'm gonna double distribute, not foil. So let's just take note here. We're gonna double distribute, not foil, because I just want you to see that this is correct, all right? So don't foil for this particular timeout. So when I say double distribute, I'm gonna take the x squared and I'm gonna multiply it to x plus two, right? So I would have x squared times x plus two, right? And then I wanna distribute the next term, so I'm gonna send the minus one to the x plus two, so I would have minus one times x plus two is equal to zero. And if you take a look, right, let me change colors, this equation here was what I was starting with right here. So I want you to see that that is working. And so I can take this, this term, or this equation in green and rework it that way. And then you can see, well, I have a difference of squares here, so that's why I factored that into x minus one plus one, and then I'm using the zero product property. So either x plus one was equal to zero, x minus one is equal to zero, or x plus two is equal to zero, and there are my three terms. All right, so I hope that clears it up. Thanks so much, bye.